first thing we're going to do is create a bash script here. We'll call it build-mac. So in here, we're just going to set some global environment variables that Electron Builder will look, will look at and uh, use to select the certificate for code signing. So we're going to use export to set, to set the environment variable. We're setting CSC underscore link. So CSC stands for code signing certificate. I'm going to pass the, the current working directory. We're going to call this from the root of our project. So I'm going to pass the folder we're currently in, build assets, and then Mac cert. And then when I exported this P12 file, I had to set a password for it. And Electron Builder needs to know that password to be able to sign. I'll set the key password variable. My password was just password. And then we'll call our npm script that actually calls Electron Builder. Okay, and before we try it out, uh, another thing we want to add to our Electron Builder configuration here, force code signing, true. So what this does is this tells Electron Builder to fail the build if code signing failed or is invalid for whatever reason. Okay, then over here in bash, we're going to add execute permissions to the bash script that we just created. Okay, now let's run it and see if it works. Okay, so our build script worked. Uh, one important security note here is that we don't want our certificates to be available to any third parties, and we don't want it included in our application bundle. My, my certificate files are in the build assets folder, and, and that is being ignored by Electron Builder, so they're not included in the build. So if your application is open source, and it's going to be on GitHub or something, you'll want to make sure to ignore the certificate files in your source control. Okay, for Windows, I'm going to do the same thing, create a new file, and we'll call it build-win. But instead of using bash, which, is, which isn't natively available in all, in all versions of Windows, I'm going to use command prompt, so I'm going to write a batch script here. So I'm going to do basically the same thing. Let's see what happens when you don't code sign your application and distribute it to others. I set up, I set up a local HTTP server, and I have, I have the signed version of our application zipped up and the unsigned version zipped up. When I try to execute the unsigned version, it says it can't be open because it's from an unidentified developer. So at this point, the only way for the user to run your application is to either find it in the finder, right click, and hit open, or change their security settings. So it's not very user friendly. So if we try our Hello World here, it says it's an application download from the internet. Are you sure you want to open it? And when you hit open, it runs just fine. As a side note, you might be wondering, why did you have to download it from the web browser to see this behavior? This is because Mac's internal security infrastructure, called Gatekeeper, automatically flags executables downloaded from the internet. When you build it on your machine unsigned, you can run it no problem. But when you or your users download it from the internet, Gatekeeper flags it as unsafe unless it can verify it has a trusted code sign, which in the unsigned case it didn't, and that's why it wouldn't let us run it. Let's see how we can verify that our app has been signed. On Mac OS, there's a code sign utility that's available on your path by default. So let's use that, and we'll run code sign, tell it to verify, we'll tell it to be verbose, so we actually get some output from it, and we'll tell it to verify deep. Basically, we pass deep because there's a lot of nested executables in our application bundle. Those all have to be signed, so we, so we want to verify that those were signed. And we'll pass strict, and then we'll pass our hello world app bundle. So, and it's returning true there and it was properly signed. Another reason that you want to code sign your app is because it ensures that the internal files in your application have not changed since you signed them. So let's test that out. So we'll just echo the string test to our star file, and let's just cat that out. And we can see this is this is our render.js. So there's the test in there, so it's clear. We'll run our verify command again. So when we, when we run it again, we can see that it says a sealed resource is missing or invalid because it's been modified saying it's not valid. 